Okay, I'm going to go through a K2 install to set up um, my development environment for a new project called reflash.io. If you see this in the future, I might make some changes. I'm probably going to delete everything once I get it set up because I'm actually going to go ahead and put this project in an existing workspace. But for the sake of this video, I want to create a new workspace. Uh, so I'm going to move as fast as I can. And uh, this is going to act as the installation instructions for K2. K2 is just a framework to help you to help f facilitate uh, getting a monetized or free uh, SaaS uh, uh, website up and running as fast as possible with the kinds of features that you would want. It's going to be a moving target for the next year as I build websites on it. I'm going to be making a lot of changes. I have a lot a, a laundry list of uh, things I want to change. So um, unless you're somebody who's pretty good at you know reading the code and doing your merges and things like that, you're going to want to be careful about uh, getting into it because some major things might change and that could upset you. Um, but I'm using it, so anything, uh, it's actually being used for superloser.io, so anything I do, I'm going to have to uh, retrofit back into that, and so it won't be that hard, because, you know, it's just it's just merging some code and making some changes. So anyway, um, so this is going to show the whole, the kind of workflow of getting development up and running. So I've got K2 on GitHub. Uh, if you download, you want to download this using your Git client or a, a GUI uh, UI. So I've got it here. I'm going to go in. It's in this folder, and I'm just going to copy that, make a copy of that. This is going to be my new repo uh, for the project. So yeah, good, still recording. Uh, so we'll rename this to reflash.io. Uh, and uh, we're not opening another program. Let me close this. Try again. Okay, what is it opening? It's not opening any folder. Oh, it might be open here. Yeah, yeah. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Let's try this again. Oh, good. It worked. Okay, so I'm going to go in there. And I'm going to actually get rid of that Git uh, folder. This might not be the official way to clone a repo. Um, get attributes is fine. Get ignore. We want to keep that. We're going to keep everything else. And so now what we're going to do, actually, the way I normally do this, watch this. We're going to do a rename. We'll call this reflash.io uh, back. We'll go into GitHub, our GitHub client. Uh, UI client, and we're going to call this uh, reflash.io. And yep, we're going to put it in shared dev folder. Uh, don't need to put the readme in there. Uh, license, no. Uh, get ignore. Don't need to worry about that. We're going to add one. We're going to do create repo. So that creates a, a repo right there. And then we just go in here and select everything. And I guess I could have just done this from, we're going to, we'll replace get attributes. Okay, so there's our new repo. And we can do initial check-in. We'll commit to main. I'm going to do development on main branch uh, at first. And we're going to publish this. We're going to keep this private because uh, this is not, this is a, not public. Um, and I could put it under ArcLogic software. I think I will. That's the name of the software company I go by. Okay, so we have a Git repo set up. Um, and we could set up, uh, eventually, actually now what we want to do is we want to create a branch. So let's go ahead and branch, a new branch from main, and we're going to call this MVP, minimal viable product. That's what I usually call my first branch, and I'm still working off that branch uh, for for my work in Super Loser. So let's create that branch, and we'll publish it. Okay. So main will act as our production uh, branch. Whatever's on main is uh, is going to be production, and MVP is what we're going to be using in development. Okay, so now we need to get some database users set up. So I know it's really bad practice, but I'm logged in as sys, and I need to create these uh, 
three users, which I've already done, RF, RF dev, and RF prod. So RF will be like the default um, user for the workspace, and then we'll add RF dev and RF prod to the workspace. And then we'll have uh, an application. Uh-oh. I've got a meeting on my calendar. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop this here, go to my meeting, and then hopefully get back to this later. All right, thanks. Okay, we're back. Um, so anyway, we've created these three users. Let's go ahead and add some grants. We're going to do file open, and we're going to uh, find our and our shared dev. By the way, I do everything on Dropbox for the code, so not only is it syncing here, but it's syncing. So if I go in the house and uh, jump on my laptop in there, um, we, we can just pick up where we left off. So we're going to go to reflash.io, um, and we're going to go to lib arc sql and we need to open up this arc sql um, uh, script and we're going to put uh, rf dev in there uh, your table space for your quota might be uh, data but it's users for the provider that i'm using we'll do five gig watch out for quotas they can come back to bite you i usually like to do unlimited and set up monitoring for space usage and have alerting on that kind of stuff but five gigs more than i'm going to need for a long long time having five gig of data would be um, a really good problem to have so um, but we need to keep that in mind and always recommend monitoring quotas uh, you never want to hit a quota can bad things can happen so I am going to hit F5 and see if this will run. There's probably grants in here that I don't really need, but there's some uh, Arc SQL is originally written to be a, a admin tool. So let's go ahead and F5. We're going to run this as sys. And we're adding these grants to RF dev. And then we're going to do the same thing for RF PRD. Uh, I don't think it's really necessary for RF because that's just like the default uh, user for the... Um, I don't even know if RF is necessary really, but... We do it anyway, in case we ever need it. It's kind of the agnostic user in the workspace, and the apps, then the other apps will be associated with specific schemas. So I'll make the grants to RF for now anyway. <clears throat> so this goes pretty fast, and then we do RF at 5, and then we'll be done with that. And then we're going to do the install. We only do the install for uh, RF dev and RF prod. Only going to do RF dev right now because that's all I'm setting up. So we're going to close that. Don't save the changes. We're going to do file open. And we're going to go back to, I wish, you know, reflash directory should be the last one there, but it's not. So we have to keep doing this. We'll go to app install. And we're going to run these one by one. I'll talk about them a little as I run them. I'm going to hit F9 to run them. Uh, I think that works now that I've changed my hotkey on my video uh, recording software. It's going to ask us where we want to run this. Uh, this is one of the dangers of running a lot of things in one environment. you got to be really careful. Um, of course, most of the stuff is item potent, so uh, it can be, you can just rerun your install script over top of anything you mess up, and it'll usually fix it. Um, sort of. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to run this as, uh, where is it, where is it? Um, we want uh, RF, oh, I'm pretty sure I have, where is this, cancel. Um, oh, I dropped the user, so that dropped my E, ah, we got to go do this, RF dev, RF dev, test, and, oh, RF dev, RF dev, no, 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 yes, created RF dev, cannot be sysdba, that ain't going to work, um, oh, password's wrong, let's go back and look at our password, because I forgot what it was already, alright, and that will be changed, Oh, all this will probably be dropped. Okay, so now creating connection. Sorry about that. RF dev. RF dev. No. Password test. Okay. Save. Connect. 
Okay, we'll go back to app install. Hit F9. RF dev, yep, that's what we want. So this, we're going to preload our secret configuration files. They're not configured at all. We'll go back and do that in a minute. They just have blanks and stuff, so nothing would really work. But we want to get these, there's some dependencies, and there might be interdependencies here. It kind of gets complicated. Uh, this is one of the things that might change. It might just all go to one, one config file. And maybe I'll have sections for kind of where the code is, is, is utilized from. Um, so now we're going to install Arc SQL. This adds a bunch of objects we can use to create tables and manage our schema. You'll see that later. There's a lot of utilities in here. There's logging. I don't always use the kind of provided logging, the provided test frameworks and stuff. I kind of like to do my own. Um, you can always hook those into your own if you want. Um, you know, typical developer, I have my own preferences for stuff like to build build rather than use sometimes um, okay now we're gonna install a utility package for apex just got a few functions in there I throw it seems like the place to put them uh, this is our authorization code so install that <clears throat> and this could all be run at once I was running it individually to see if it would actually work because sometimes you get errors and I haven't tested it. This is a little utility script that's part of Arc SQL to fix your identity sequences. If your identity value, if you've been copying data between environments and you copied some keys that are higher than the identity in that environment, this will fix them. I don't think identities do that automatically, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so um, we're all installed now, and we could do the exact same thing for RF. PRD, but we're not going to do that right now. We have created the user. Actually, yeah, we, we gave the grants to the user. That's all we need. So now we're going to go into our um, workspace admin here. So we're signing into, and we're going to create a workspace, and we'll call this RF for Reflash. And we are going to use an existing schema. And to select, uh, if the schema exists, select the schema from the list. Uh, I don't know why it says those are actually required because they're not. Okay, our admin user is going to be me. So it'll be epost. And it's going to make me change this. as soon as I log in. So uh, you might not want to um, use a password you actually want to use. Uh, we'll say, no thanks. Create workspace. Okay, workspace is created. Let's go to edit workspace. And this is where I had some problems. Let's see, existing workspaces, no, manage workspaces. We want to, man we want to uh, manage workspace schema assignments. So we're going to allow us to create apps that point to more than RF. They'll never actually point to RF. We're going to add our existing schema. The workspace is RF. The schema is going to be RF dev. And I think we just say add schema. And we'll do that one more time existing workspace rf schema rfprd and we'll add that schema i think that's all i do in the at the workspace level uh da, 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 da. we don't need to create any user users i'm an admin okay i think we're good so now we can log out of that and now we'll log in to the workspace. So we'll log into RF as ePost. And we'll use our password we just set up. And click sign in. And yep, so it wants us to change our password. One of the difficult things with Apex is it's a lot of different passwords to remember um, and things like that. So you kind of want to come up with a system to make that easy. You're not using the same password any, everywhere, but there's the same kind of system for using 
common password, kind of a, a common methodology. Okay. So uh, we'll add that. Okay. Um, so now we're in um, our application, and what we're going to do is create uh, the first app. So this will be this will be a oh, 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 new application. And we're going to call this uh, reflash.io MVP. So that we'll do Vita side menu, all the defaults. Uh, we can just, you know, we can, we don't, I don't, I don't select anything. As far as application ID goes, um, I don't know, we, it wants to start at 104. Um, usually what I've been doing, and it doesn't, totally doesn't matter. Um, I put my developments in the hundreds and my um, production in the thousands. Um, so the schema here, this is where we want to select RF dev for the schema. Uh, authentication, we're just going to leave that set up right now. And then we say create application. Okay. So uh, let's go into Sublime Text. I don't have that pulled up. And let's go to project. Uh, you can use any IDE you want. I'm going to do add folder to project. And yeah, we're going to add reflash.io. Okay, and this is my development environment. And we can start looking at config uh, to get started. We're going to need to do import um, a file, which I don't have available right now. I need to actually go add that to the repo, but that will bring in my authentication. Um, so we'll start to get authentication set up and some other things before we start, you know, going into our app folder and building our project. But uh, at this point, what we can say is we are, our development environment is installed and ready to go. We can start making changes and all that. And so... That's the end of this video. Um, hopefully I'll get some more videos out uh, later in uh, regards to setting up authentication and using some of the features within K2. Thanks for watching.